Long ago and far away in the city of Jerusalem, a very special visitor came to town. His name was Jesus. He arrived on a beautiful Sunday in spring. What's happening? Where's everyone going? Haven't you heard? It's him! He's here! He's finally here! Oh! Who's here? The king! Come on! The king? Come on, let's go! There he is! There's Jesus! Where? Not that fellow on the donkey colt. The king? On a donkey? He should be riding a golden chariot pulled by mighty horses. Are you sure he's a king? He looks so ordinary, like one of us. He may not look special, but did you hear what he's done? He's done the most amazing things to help people. Even when Jesus is very busy, he takes time to bless children. There was a beggar who had been blind all his life. Jesus touched him, and you know what happened? The blind man could see. And that's not all. I heard Jesus went to a wedding, and there wasn't enough wine. So he took barrels of water and turned them into wine. Water into wine? That's nothing. I heard he knows how to walk on water. Oh, he's such a wonderful man. Nice man. Make way! Make way! Come on, donkey. There's a good donkey. Come on. Good thinking, Andrew. Which way do you want to go, Jesus? Let's go to the temple. I'm excited to get back to my father's house of prayer. To the temple! Come on! This way! <sighs> it's been a busy morning. The temple will be quiet and peaceful. No, it's okay. It's okay. The people don't care. You can bring the donkey in the temple with you. Ah! Ah! You said this was a place of worship. Well, the more money you spend, the better the blessing. It should be a house of prayer to honor God, not to make money. But look, it's like an animal farm in here. This bird is well dropped. Stove drop. That's, that's, that's much too hard. Look at that. Oh. Leave here, all of you. Now. Come, let's go. Not everyone was happy to see Jesus. Some priests in the temple were very jealous that everyone liked Jesus more than they liked them. They didn't believe that he was the king. You're always telling us about this wonderful place called heaven. But how do we get into heaven? Trust in God and trust in me. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive people when they do wrong. If people are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. If someone needs help, Will you people please stop pushing? We all want to hear what Jesus has to say. It's all right, Peter. Someone touched me. Who was it? There are so many people here. How could I know? Who was it? Who touched me? I did. 
I have been sick for many years. I wanted to touch you and be healed. Now you are better and can go in peace. Oh, thank you. From watching what I do and listening to what I say, you can learn how to enter into heaven. Love everyone, rich or poor. Most of all, I want you to learn to love your enemies. Hmm. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, was confused. He had followed Jesus for a long time, but he still didn't understand how to love everyone. He was also confused because he liked having money, and he always wanted more. I know I dropped it here somewhere. Excuse me, I've lost some money. Have you seen my coin? Does it have your name on it? One day, Judas decided to do something bad. Do you want to know where you can find Jesus? Yes. Who are you? I'm one of his disciples, Judas. I can show you where he stays for a price. Yes, take us to him. He's causing us too much trouble. The people like him more than us now. We must stop him. What will you give me if I tell you where he is? How's this? 30 pieces of silver. Don't worry. No one will know what you've done. All right. It's a deal. I'll come back soon and lead you to Jesus. That night, Jesus invited his closest followers, the disciples, to a special dinner. Hello, welcome, Peter and Andrew, and you too, James, John, Philip and Bartholomew. Hello, Thomas, Matthew, and James. Nice to see you, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. <sighs> what a long, hot day. I'm tired. Oh, me too. And my feet are filthy from those dirty streets. <sighs> I could sure use a bath. I know. Let's get a servant to wash our feet for us. Good idea. Jesus, do you know of a servant who can take care of us? Certainly. <gasps> hey, what are you doing? I'm washing your feet. Lift, please. But, but I didn't want you to do that. I wanted a servant to do it. You're too important, too powerful to kneel before me and wash my feet. Please, Peter, it's okay. I want to do this. And me too? And you, John. May I? And so Jesus himself, their Lord and teacher, went around the table with a large bowl of water. He washed everyone's feet until they were all clean. Even though I'm your Lord, I'm also your servant. I want to take care of you. And I want you to take care of others, too. Hmm. Now listen to me. I have something very important to tell you tonight. Someone here is going to do something bad to me. Someone is going to betray my trust and love. Who? Who is it? Could it be me? Or me? Not me. Go ahead, Judas. Do what you are going to do. First, I will give thanks. We thank you, God our Father, because you give us bread to eat and wine to drink. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this wine, I want you to remember me. The disciples didn't understand yet what Jesus was saying or why Judas had run off. They were confused, but they continued to listen. This is the last supper I'm going to have with you. I have to go away soon, but don't worry. 
We'll see each other again, I promise. And I want you to remember, always love one another as I love you. But we don't want you to go away. We want you to stay with us, always. Do you really have to go? Yes, but remember what I tell you. I'll be back. Soon we'll be together again. Is someone trying to hurt you? If so, we'll help you, won't we? My dear friends, tonight you will be afraid, but everything will be all right. But now I want to go outside and pray. Do any of you want to join me? I do. Me too. You can sure, count on I'll me, go. Jesus. Me yeah, too. Me too. I'll, I'll go with, with you. you. Right by your I'll side. I'll go too. All right. Then follow me. And so Jesus led 11 of his disciples outside. It was a beautiful starry night. They walked and walked until they got to a hill called the Mount of Olives. It was late and the disciples were getting tired. I want to be alone for a few minutes. You'll wait here for me and keep watch, won't you? Of course we will. We'll be right here if you need us. <sighs> That's right, you can count on us. I'm tired. Mm, me too. I know. Let's rest against these rocks and this tree. Dear Father, I know you love me and are watching over me, but sometimes I'm still afraid of what's going to happen. Please help me be strong to do what you want me to do. Thank you. Amen. But back in the city of Jerusalem... Which way is he? <laughs> Follow me. Peter? John? Where is everyone? <laughs> Sound asleep. Oh, it's you! Oh, where am I? What's going on? It's okay. It's time to wake up. Huh? What's going on? Hello, Jesus. Oh! oh. oh. <gasps> Come on! We have to protect him! It's okay. I must go. Put down your sword. This is what God wants me to do. <laughs> Following the orders of Pontius Pilate, the soldiers who carried Jesus away treated him as though he had broken the law. This was because there were some people who did not believe he was the Son of God. And so it was that Jesus died on a cross with a thief on each side of him. The disciples were very, very sad. They missed their Lord. But soon, a great surprise would happen. Some of the disciples took Jesus' body and cared for it. They brought him to a cave to be buried, as was the custom in those days. Then they put a big rock in front of the cave entrance, so no one else could get in. And finally, guards were ordered to stay in front of the cave. Two full days and nights passed.
And then on the third morning... You hear something? Yeah, what is that? Hey, what's going on around here? Huh? How is that stone moving all by itself? Look! Just then, some of Jesus' friends were on their way to visit the cave. We have everything we need, right? Perfume? Spices? I think so. Now we just need to talk to the guards. I hope they don't try to stop us. <gasps> Out of my way! <laughs> I wonder why they're running. <gasps> Do not be surprised. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. He's alive again. Go and tell all of his friends the good news. Jesus lives! <gasps> we must go tell everyone. What good news! Peter, John, angels, it's unbelievable. He's alive. Jesus is alive again. An angel appeared before me and told me the good news. I can't believe it. What a miracle. Incredible. Risen from the dead. Praise God. I must see for myself. It's so good to see you. I have some great news. Jesus is risen. He is alive again. Mm-hmm. I know that you've been sad lately, Mary. Why don't you get some rest? No, really. Everything I say is true. Uh, thanks for the news, Mary. 
That's really great. Why don't you go on home now? Believe me, it's true. Oh, Thomas, I'll see you later. I'd have to see Jesus with my own two eyes to believe it. Wouldn't it be great, though, to walk into this house and see my teacher's familiar face again? I can almost picture it now. Jesus would be standing here, smiling at me. Ooh. Jesus? Jesus! It, is that you? Now that Jesus is gone, we might as well fish. Are you ready with the net? Uh-huh. Come on, John. Okay. And a one, a two, a three! All right. Let's pull her back in. Pull! 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 Oh, no. Not again. We haven't caught so much as a minnow. Let's try it again, I guess. A one, a two, a... Look! Who's that over there? Throw your net on the other side of your boat. What is that going to prove? Besides, we've already tried that. We already tried that! Try again! Why should there be fish on one side of the boat and not the other? Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Come on. And a one, a two, a three! Whoa! Whoa! Pull! Pull! Look at all these fish! Just look at them! But how can that be? How did he know that? Who is that man? Some kind of miracle. A, A miracle? miracle? Jesus? It is! I can't believe it! It's him! Jesus! Jesus. Quick, everybody, pull in the nets! Pull in the nets and let's get rowing! You're back! I can't believe you're back! Yes, Peter, but only for a little while. You see, I have to go back to my father in heaven soon. Are you leaving us again? You just got back. We want you to stay. Don't be sad. You should all be happy. Rejoice! Happy? How can we be happy when you're going to leave us again? Because I died to make up for all the wrong things people have ever done. You mean you died for us? But why? Because I love you all. What do you want us to do? God wants you to be with him in everything you do. And the way to do that is to love everyone the way I love you. I'm going to make a place in heaven for you. Tell everyone you meet about me and about what I have taught you. And always remember, I will be with you forever. We'll never forget you. We will tell everyone about your love. And the disciples never did forget. They went through villages and cities in many parts of the world, telling people about Jesus and the great things he had done. In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light and the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. 
There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day, because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants. God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves, and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day. And a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, and more birds, and more birds. And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. the fifth day. But there was still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. Big animals. And small animals. There were spotted animals. And horned animals.
every one of God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. <coughs> Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for and protect. Sit. Er, uh, sit, please. <laughs> God looked over everything and was happy, and on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. Well, uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. This new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots Eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must be long to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, 
not too hokey. Know your wordle, be turtle, yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea will mostly fishes be, with whale and snail and lobster one and all. The orange one is goldfish, cod, the ice cold fish. Tadpole has the bold wish of one day being thrown. The way you jump around, you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur. So you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not proper. Oh, I have it, you're rabbit for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend, too. There were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden, and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person. So God created woman. What? Hello. Uh, hello. I mean, uh, hi. I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden, the Garden of Eden. It's really nice here, you'll see. These are my friends, this is Monkey, and this is Dog, and this is, um, I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it, and I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may eat of anything else in the garden but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating, absolutely no eating. Right, anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. And so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden, until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh, 
you startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um, I, I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do ya? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit, isn't it? You can eat it, you know. E eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. God probably won't even notice. And this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. Try it. Well, if it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief! I'm naked! <gasps> Yikes! I'm naked too! <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh-oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. Well, I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh-oh. Adam, Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. 
I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no! You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here, but it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad. But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after. <laughs>